The last game of the Sonic Racing Trilogy is finally here. Team Sonic Racing, released on May 21st of 2019. So yeah, we're on the game's 5th anniversary already. So this is Sumo Digital's 3rd racing game in the Sonic series. But unlike the last two Sonic games, this one is mainly focused on the Sonic cast. Now I know some might be a bit put off from that, but I don't mind it that much. The promotion of the game is somewhat questionable. See, it was announced at E3 in 2018, and we had a bunch of trailers showcasing the features, but we rarely saw any gameplay of it. We didn't even get a demo of the game. In fact, let me just say this here. Stop omitting worldwide demos, thank you. The trailers were nice, and we did get to see what to expect from Team Sonic Racing, but then we got hit with a delay. It was supposed to be released on the last day of 2018, but was delayed to May 21st of 2019. The reason why is because they had to fix the online mode. And spoilers, the online mode is both bad and dead. I recommend you watch Clement J64's video on the game to get more details on it. Now we did get two animated shorts to promote the game, which was nice. I hope Sega continues to do this more often with their future releases. And when the game finally released, it sold pretty well. Even more than its predecessor, which is nice. But does this game hold up well? Let's find out by beginning with the story. And yes, this is the first traditional Sonic racing game to have a story mode. So let's give that some attention first. An alien Tanuki named Dodonpa sends invitations to Sonic and his friends, inviting them to compete in a series of team-based races. He built cars outfitted with advanced technology for each of the races, offering them as a prize for the winning team. Despite being skeptical of Dodonpa's motivations, Sonic and the others agree. So they ended up racing around the world, completing many different challenges. They became suspicious of Dodonpa, believing he may work with Dr. Eggman. Investigating further, they discover he's the king of the planet Donpa Kingdom and the president of the Donpa Motors Automotive Corporation. They're constructing an ultimate energy engine, which gains power from teamwork. Basically, the my friends are my power cliche. Dodonpa has been using the races to gather research data for the engine and generate energy to power it. After unsuccessfully attempting to steal the engine, Eggman and his team kidnap Dodonpa and hold him hostage on their battleship. Eggman deceives Dodonpa into finishing the engine for him, forcing Sonic and the others to continue racing to power it. Eggman installs the engine into a doomsday robot, but it goes haywire and ends up destroying the battleship. Sonic and the others were able to rescue Dodonpa as the ship explodes, but the cars were totaled in the process. However, Dodonpa made new cars for everyone to have, and so that's it. That's the end of Team Sonic Racing's story. Alright, now that we got that settled, let's get this race started. Yeah! yeah! Now, if I can credit Team Sonic Racing's story on certain things, I think the presentation is actually not that bad. The cutscenes aren't winning any awards, but at least they're fully voiced. Speaking of which, we do get a few new voices from some of the characters. No longer is Laura Bailey voicing Blaze and Oma Chow, but instead we got Erica Lindback voicing those two, and to no surprise, she did amazing as these two. We got Bryce Pappenbrook as the voice of Silver, easily the best one we've got so far. And replacing Travis Willingham as the voice of Knuckles, we got Dave B. Mitchell providing the voice for the knucklehead Echidna. So yeah, the new voices are pretty good, and every character in the game is brimming with personality. I love the competitive rivalry between Sonic and Shadow. It's so on point. And hearing Amy and Blaze talk shit towards each other was something I didn't expect, but I'm glad that happened. Do you do much driving, princess? Or do you have a chauffeur? Are you mocking me, Amy? I will have you know, driving is one of my many skills. I hope so, because I hate to make you look bad out there. <laughs> Let's go see who ends up looking bad. But man, I love what they did with Silver. He went from a depressing hedgehog wanting to save the future to a cute, lovable dork. Sega, please give the Silver Hedgehog his own game. I'm begging you, he deserves it a lot. You seem quite determined, Vector. We'll go, but only to bail you out of trouble when it happens. And believe me, it will happen. The only thing I wish could have been better is the character himself, Dodonpa. Not much going on about him other than having his own planet and race car company. And I find the inconsistency of whether or not to trust the Tanuki to be hella annoying. And it's not like he's a bad character, he's okay and 
I do think Howard Hebert did a remarkable job as a Tanuki King, but nothing special about him comes in mind. And why the fuck would you tell Rouge of all people that you have a treasure and a shiny crown? She's gonna steal that shit, you know? She's a treasure hunter. One more question. Since you're a king and everything, do you have a crown covered with jewels and a treasure vault filled with precious gems? Of course! Why do you ask? Oh, no reason, sugar. So yeah, the story may be nothing special, but I admire the effort in wanting to make a story mode for a kart racing game like Sonic. Hopefully Sooner or Digital can build upon this and make an even better story mode, whether they make another Sonic racing game. Now that they, we got the story out of the way, let's jump right into the gameplay. Now Team Sonic Racing does share the same mechanics as Sonic Transform, the same red, blue, and purple boost every time you drift, and you still have the flips and barrel rolls. Now for the differences, there are rings you can collect on each track that'll help you go even faster. Think of it like the coin system from Mario Kart 8. And as far as items go, they're now in the form of Wisp. And again, if you're gonna compare that to Mario Kart 8, you go right ahead, cause this game is just asking for it. And now you get to hear me struggle saying the word Wisp. The Blue Wisp gets you a speed boost, the Rocket Wisp lets you shoot a rocket that'll bounce off walls, Spike Wisp can turn your vehicle into a hazard for players to run into, First Wisp leaves a trail of fire from behind, Bomb Wisp lets you shoot a bomb from forwards or backwards, Ghost Wisp can let you pass through obstacles and attacks, as well as stealing nearby items. Problem is, it lets you pass through capsules, so there may be times where you want to get another item, but it won't let you. Lightning Wisp can stun enemies in their attacks. Eagle Wisp hones in on nearby opponents. Drill Wisp can act as a bullet bill. The Laser Wisp can shoot a laser beam that'll zap and spin out opponents. Void Wisp can let you absorb rings and capsules and slow down opponents. Cube Wisp can block incoming projectiles and can hit opponents. Quake Wisp sends pillars of stone in front of the pack. And finally, there's the Rhythm Wisp, which can blind anyone temporarily. Why was that so hard to say in a sentence? So yeah, these items are pretty cool to use. I am not using that word ever again. And they have the same impact as Sonic Transformed, which is good. However, I think it's about time I address the elephant in the room. And that's the character roster. Unlike the last two racing games, Team Sonic Racing has a roster of 15 characters. And since this is strictly a Sonic Racing game, we only have Sonic characters in this game. Now that's something I can get behind, but what I can't excuse is the weird pairing of teams. Of course we have Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles as Team Sonic, and we have Shadow Rouge and E123 Omega as Team Dark. However, when it comes to Team Rose, we have Amy and Big, which is good, but they decided to throw 4 Chow into the mix. Silver and Blaze makes sense, but why the fuck is Vector with these two? And Zavok teaming up with Eggman and Metal Sonic? Uh, did we forget that he had a huge vendetta against Eggman and Sonic the Lost World? I'm sorry, but this 15 character roster is bullshit. What a fucking B to the itch. I know, my language has gotten pretty naughty at this point, but why the need for 15 characters? Why make these weird pairings? Cream should have been in this game instead of the 4 child. Espio and Charmy should have teamed up with Vector as Chaotix again. Hell, this could have been the perfect opportunity to bring back Marina Raccoon from Sonic Rush Adventure. She could have teamed up with Silver and Blaze considering that she's from Blaze's dimension. And come on, would it kill them to have Orbot and Cubot playable for once? They could have been part of Eggman's team instead of Zabot. And if you're gonna have him into the game, at the very least add two more Zeddy into the mix. Zaz and Xena would have been perfect inclusions into the game. Having only 15 characters in a racing game released in the late 2010s is hella disappointing. However, if I can praise this roster for one thing, it's that every character is playable from the get-go. Don't get me wrong, I love unlocking characters in video games because that's what makes it so rewarding, and Sonic Transform screwed that up badly. However, I think Sumo Digital Play is smart by making all the characters in Team Sonic Racing playable at the beginning, so I can appreciate that. Characters are broken up into three different classes, Speed, Technique, and Power. And depending on which class you're racing as, will determine what specific effects that specific type has. For the speed class, we have Sonic, Amy, Shadow, Blaze, and Metal Sonic. They're the fastest of the bunch with the best speed and can block incoming projectiles, which is pretty cool. For the technique class, we have Tails, Chow, Rouge, Silver, and Dr. Eggman. This is my all-time favorite class to use. 
not only do they have good boost and handling, but they can drive through terrain. Grass, sand, water, it doesn't matter as they can drive through it all without slowing down. Now that is awesome. Finally, we have the power class, which has Knuckles, Big, E123 Omega, Vector, and Zeva. They're able to pass through obstacles as well as collecting rings from said obstacles. The only downside to this class is that the handling is not good. Not only are they the slowest of the bunch, but it's also hard to control these heavy ass characters. However, I'm happy to say that their stats can be changed to make them better. And that's where the customization comes in. Every character has over 20 customizable parts, which you can use to not only put more style into your vehicle, but it can also change the stats of the vehicle as well. You can change the front, back, and wheels of the vehicle to make it stand out from the crowd. However, in order to unlock these car parts, all you have to do is play the game. For every race, challenge, or GP you finish, you'll earn credits, which you can use to buy car parts and power-ups. Each of these costs only 10 credits, and unlike predatory games like Mario Kart Tour and Crash Team Racing, Team Sonic Racing is not only microtransaction free, but just earning credits is as easy as the second mile system back in Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. And the cool thing about this game is that you're not going to be getting any duplicates of the car parts. Once you get that car part, you keep it for good. So I appreciate the system of unlocking. And as if customizing car parts ain't enough, you can also change the color of your vehicle as well. So you can go all out making whatever kind of vehicle you want it to look like. Since purple is my favorite color, I don't really mess with Blaze's car that much, but I do like to add some blue to it. Or I could just make it look similar to Kira Macaron from Kira Kira Pretty Kira a la mode. I'm a big fan of black, pink, and the music, so why not change the color of Rouge's car to black and pink? Goku is one of my favorite characters in Dragon Ball, so of course I had to give Sonic's car the color that represents him. Hell, you can even make references and callbacks from previous Sonic games. You can change the color of Tails' car to look blue and gold to make it look like the tornado too. You can give Sonic's car the Werehog colors from Sonic Unleashed. Tango is easily one of the best characters in Sonic IDW, so why not have Amy's car referenced into Spunky Lemur? By now it's clear that Demi is my favorite character from Izuzoku Reviewers, so I couldn't resist making a color preset using her colors as well. There's a lot of customization in this game, and it's what makes this game stand out from the trilogy. Of course, if you want to unlock those last seven paint kits, you need to complete all the races and GPs on Expert Difficulty and Team Adventure. But sheesh, is it me, or is this game a lot harder to do so? Even on hard difficulty, I can't even win a single goddamn race, and I'm wondering what the hell am I doing wrong? And now it's just a team adventure. Even on standard, normal races, it, I can't even win a single race by myself. But when I switch over to team racing, that's when I'm able to at least do fairly decent. So what the hell am I missing here? So despite my harsh criticism of this character roster, at the very least, the customization is a shining light at the end of this dark tunnel. I guess it's finally time I talk about the main gimmick of this game, and it's in the title itself. Race as a team of three, and you work together in order to win. So if you think you can just win first place in all four races, that's not going to be enough. Your whole team has to do well in order to win. The game tallies you and your teammates' points together. So if your teammates aren't doing hot enough, you're not going to win. Now, how do you win as a team? That's where the team mechanics comes into play. Whoever's ahead of the team will leave a yellow trail, and by driving onto that trail, you'll be able to gain some boost. You can get your teammates back in a race by speeding past them, giving them a boost. You can take down rivals that are ahead of you in the rankings, and you can pass along items to your teammates. So if one of them isn't doing so well, you can pass your item to help them out. And thank god there's no friendly fire. So if you run into or get hit by any of your teammates' items, you will not spin out and take damage. Now that is a total godsend. When you complete all of these team actions, you'll build up your team ultimate meter. And when it's maxed out, you can use your team ultimate to get back in the race. Not only will you be faster, but also invincible. Now depending on which character you use, the team ultimate would play their theme. Dreams of an Absolution is my all time favorite Sonic song. So of course you'll be hearing that when playing as Silver. You'll hear Rouge's theme, which is Security Hall from Sonic Adventure 2. And speaking of Sonic Adventure 2, it should be noted that Tails' theme also plays when using his Team Ultimate. So yeah, even though the Team Ultimates play the exact same, at least every character has their own theme to listen to.
definitely did a remarkable job on the team mechanics now let's talk about the race tracks there are 21 tracks to race on and if you thought it was ridiculous in the first game team sonic racing by far has the laziest track selection of the three now i will say this here i do appreciate the new tracks we got we got some more sonic colors representation in the mix and i love how they brought in mother wisp from the ds version we got boo's house from sonic adventure 2 sandopolis from sonic 3 Frozen Junkyard has the Depth Egg Robot from Sonic Forces. We also got Rooftop Run from Sonic Unleashed. And speaking of which, we also have Haunted Castle, which is Pagonia, but is also referenced in Sonic Unleashed Night of the Werehog. The new tracks and details are really cool. So if you were to ask me what's my biggest problem with the track selection, almost half of the tracks are from the previous games, CSI Hill, Casino Park, and Final Fortress. The only track that came back from Sonic Transformed is Ocean View. Everything else is from the first game. Now I love Pinball Highway, but it does not feel the same here. You can't even play the Final Fortress tracks in GPs. And I have to ask, why? And it's so repetitive to race on the roulette road for a third fucking time. It's so lazy having to reuse previous tracks just to fill in the gap. It also doesn't help the fact that some of these tracks are way too fucking long. I do not remember Pinball Highway being almost 6 minutes. Don't even get me started on fucking Clockwork Pyramid. That track is just... Why? Just why 5 minutes, bro? I love the new tracks they created, and I admire the amount of love and detail being put into them, but Sumo Digital really has to stop glazing Sonic Heroes so much. It's been done to death at this point. Now, as I said before, this game does have a story mode, and it's in the form of Team Adventure. In order to progress through the game, you'll need to complete challenges which are completely terrible. What were they thinking making the story mode similar to Sonic Transform's World Tour mode? They expect you to do challenges like collect a certain amount of rings, race through three races in a GP, look through goal posters which is a terrible challenge, destroy as many targets as you can, do drift challenges, and drive through traffic once again. Again, I don't mind the actual story in the game. But not only is it tedious to progress through it, but the challenges themselves are not good. So yeah, that's pretty much the game itself. I guess if I were to cover the minor stuff, I'll start with multiplayer. Like Sonic Transform, you can play with friends and family in local multiplayer everywhere. Except for online, which again, not really going to get much into it, it's pretty bad. And the soundtrack is okay, I admire the amount of effort being put into these music tracks but the remixes of the previous music tracks aren't really that good. Roulette Road has to be the worst of the 9 remixes. It just doesn't sound good at all. The best thing to come out of the soundtrack is the intro song Green Light Ride by Crush 40. Seriously, Crush 40 never misses when it comes to performing Sonic music, and Green Light Ride is no exception. Team Sonic Racing is really good at best and very average at worst. I can see why this game was priced at $40, but this game wasn't even worth $40, let alone $30. I think if Sega gave Sumo Digital another year and added more characters, as well as fixing the online mode, Team Sonic Racing could have lasted a bit longer. And it didn't help that it was released in the same year as Crash Team Racing. The damage was already done at that point. However, the game still held up to its standards, and again, it sold way more than Sonic Transform, so I can cut this game some slack. Team Sonic Racing gets a 7 out of 10 for me. While it's not on par with its predecessors, the team mechanics and car customization is what makes up for it. So if you're really into Sonic Racing games, you can give this one a shot. But if you prefer a 20 plus character roster with a good online mode, don't bother getting it. This has been such a fun ride exploring these three racing games. And no matter which one you prefer, what's most important is having a blast with it. Now, the rest of the month is completely booked with Fortnite content, now that Fortnite Mirrors is going on, but you can bet that my next review will be in November. And the next game I'll be covering is yet another 2D shooter. So join me next time as I talk about Hazelnut Hex. Until then, this is Star the Protagonist signing out. As always, Goki Genyo, and have a star-tastic day, everyone. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to join the Star Nation. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, and while you're at it, check out my previous video. Now.